dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I apologise if I'm nervous this morning. Good morning. It's with uh, great pleasure that we welcome you to the third annual International Congress of uh, Agribusiness Forum, which takes place at the Benaki Museum in Athens. The topic is uh, Food safety, security and resilience, pressing challenges in the COVID-19 era and beyond. Although the Congress takes place amidst the COVID-19 era, the Agribusiness Forum did not hesitate to proceed to organising this conference uh, with the presence of uh, exceptional speakers and a very limited number of uh, participants in order to allow us to have this uh, crucial dialogue on uh, the safety, security, hygiene and food security, food sufficiency, sufficiency of modern societies and the impact of climate change. Our aim is to face the challenges for stable, sustainable, safe, secure and profitable agri-food systems both in Greece and all over the world. As always, Agribusiness Forum has uh, very important speakers and uh, officials and officers of the Greek, European and international agricultural sector. We'd like to thank all of them, without an exception, because during these times of the COVID, they are here to honour us uh, with their presence uh, during the Agribusiness Forum and in the next few hours uh, they will be able to analyse the trends and determine the challenges and file suggestions within the context of our conference. We're grateful to everyone for the help, the assistance, the cooperation and of course their presence here. Because of the situation with uh, COVID and the travelling restrictions uh, applicable both in Greece and uh, on an international scale, we're very sad that we cannot have with us four, only four out of the 30 in total speakers in this Congress. More specifically, people that will connect from Texas United States, The Hague in the Netherlands and Brussels from the European Commission and of course you will be able to watch what they have to say through live streaming. Now let us talk a bit about Agribusiness Forum and uh, allow me to characterise that as synonymous to agricultural technology which in a very limited amount of time managed to become a hub a hub for the promotion of uh, collaboration schemes and intersectoral, intersectoral information awareness on uh, the modernization and digital transformation of the agri-food chain on the production, processing and distribution of agricultural products of added value. Agribusiness Forum ever since it started happening has um, a broad range of participants and a broad audience uh, that always uh, focuses on important issues and cooperates with uh, scientific organisations of local and international repute uh, that um, contribute to the drafting of the agenda. So among the scientific partners uh, that allow us to craft the agenda. We have organisations such as FAO UN from the United Nations, that is. The Agronomical University of Athens, Texas uh, University, Hash University, the ZLTO from the Netherlands, uh, the American Agriculture School, ELGU, Demeter, the Institute of uh, Agronomic Studies, Aga, um, and the Thessaloniki University, the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, through Logistics Supply Chain Institute, etc. Of course, an event such as the Agribusiness Forum could by no means take place without the support of uh, important companies 
businesses that are here to uh, stand by our sides uh, when we have uh, new initiatives. So we're grateful for the assistance of Inter-American and uh, Athens uh, uh, Brewery that are the great sponsors of this organization, as well as Alpha Bank Car Hair with the unique cleaning systems, IFCO, Gnomon Events, Nectar with the uh, refreshments in Greece, Hypnosophisterio, which in the last two years uh, has uh, set a high standard of gastronomy. And the speakers of this conference had the opportunity to taste what uh, Hypnosophisterio has uh, last night during the dinner at the coolest and most trendy restaurant in Athens located in uh, Kifisia called Nati. Thanks to the assistance of people that have supported the entire organisation. Among the actions of the Agribusiness Forum, we include the organisation of conferences, congresses, of international, regional and local aspects. Training workshops and training courses and innovative uh, new businesses, the international, the annual uh, innovation competition and the thematic travelling to European destinations. Of course, the situation with the, the COVID uh, couldn't prevented us from organising events of the kind, but we hope that as of next year in 2021, we will be able to implement these as well. So these will include uh, thematic travelling in um, top European destinations such as the Netherlands. Especially for this year, the Agribusiness Forum was organised in a hybrid way so that due to the precaution measures, we will be able to allow people to attend uh, through the internet, through live streaming, the works of our conference. And of course, we ask for your understanding if during the flow on live streaming, there are some unprecedented events that we cannot predict, unpredictable events, which might affect your experience uh, during today's conference. And of course, uh, Agribusiness uh, Forum and we, the organising committee, the organisers, uh, are great fans of uh, personal contact and the experience that this has to offer to the audience. But of course, uh, this uh, presupposes our presence in location. We do not believe we would not invest uh, in the internet, even though the technology nowadays can support that. So we would have uh, loved to be able to see all of you in this room, although it was not possible. So taking the above into account, we decided to allow the audience uh, to attend the conference uh, without a fee. And we hope that in 2021, we will have the pleasure to welcome the friends of Agribusiness Forum in one of the four events we are already planning. These events will be the fourth International Conference of Agriculture Technology in November in Athens, November 2021, that is. Most probably it will take place uh, in the Benaki Museum, like today. Then the first regional conference of agriculture technology that will take place at late June in Thessaly. Agri-Food Traction Tour in August in the Netherlands with 11 field visits and meetings uh, with businesses and agencies in order to exchange uh, experiences and practices, best practices, share best practices. And a conference of agritourism, we have not decided upon the location and the timing for that. Before I finish, I would like to inform our friends online that each session you can watch a session uh, live, and if you have any questions uh, that you want to ask the speakers, here you can see a field uh, on the upper right corner, and you can type your questions there. So we will receive these uh, questions. And the moderator of each session will afterwards be able to ask the speakers of the session. So your questions will be answered nonetheless. In the system, we're very happy to say that we have uh, 450 participants. This is the number of people that registered. But we would like to ask for your understanding 
once again if you ask questions because there will be numerous questions so you understand that we might not be able to answer all of them each and every one technically speaking at the end of uh, each session there will be a card informing you that the next session is about to start and uh, the entire content of the conference uh, will be uploaded on the internet you will get the link so that you can watch that uh, at a later stage and of course due to the protocol we could not have a printout of the agenda at the conference so as of tomorrow if you go to the website the agenda will be made available to all of you and we'll be able to send you a link so that you can download uh, whatever content is uh, made available through the Agribusiness Forum. So welcome to Agribusiness Forum 2020. We wish you uh, a pleasant uh, attendance by works and we hope that you're going to find it very fruitful and useful throughout their day. Thank you very much. Dear friends, good morning. On behalf of the Agribusiness Forum, hosting all of us here today, under adverse circumstances, we're here to touch upon the issue not only of agricultural product, production, but also of our survival. I'm an agronomist and I will be coordinating the first session in cooperation with Mr. Mikhailidis. I uh, work at the Lgo Dimitra and I am the director of Empassi Group, uh, which is involved, which operates in the field of landscape uh, uh, architecture. Allow me to thank Yanis Balakakis and congratulate him and his collaborators and all of you uh, on your presence here today, for being here on their bold initiative to actually organize this forum, this conference, and I feel it an obligation, as an obligation to thank Mr. Balakakis and all uh, he, of his collaborators for organizing uh, this beautiful meeting and conference. Uh, the first topic, the first theme, uh, is the theme of uh, the environment and climate change and the role of the agricultural sector within this framework uh, through synergies and many different uh, initiatives and actions in many different fields. We are waiting for Mrs. Dionysia Avierinopoulou, Chair of the Committee on Environmental Protection at the Hellenic Parliament. Um, we uh, are waiting for her. Mr. Um, Georgios Kremlis, uh, who is an advisor to the Prime Minister, Mr. Kyriakos Mitsotakis, and who is the Chair of the ESPO, a convention bureau uh, in, on environmental issues at the European Commission. Then uh, the popular and dear uh, chef, uh, Dimitris Skarmutsus, executive chef, he is uh, here to present lots of interesting things about uh, food waste management. And then uh, we will have the pleasure of listening to Mr. Haralambos Kasimis, professor at the Agricultural University of Athens. He will be touching upon a very interesting issue having to do, uh, rather the issue of from the farm to the plate to the fork, from farm to fork, uh, and the Green Deal. And then the last speaker for this first of this first panel will be Mr. George Zalidis, Director of the Laboratory of Remote Sensing uh, Spectroscopy and GIS uh, Systems, that is. Uh, 
and uh, he will be closing the first session touching upon uh, the carbon footprint in agriculture. So, climate change, uh, this is, uh, these are two terms we have been using a lot over the past years. Uh, so we will be dealing with this issue, trying to find ways to move forward. Allow me to add one more uh, parameter to the subject. Over the past years, we have uh, witnessed massive uh, movement of uh, immigrants, environmental immigrants as well, people who are forced into fleeing their homes uh, for reasons, for environmental reasons. And this uh, leads to many changes in our uh, um, diet habits. Uh, and this is indeed uh, yet another issue of paramount importance. So, uh, we will be uh, listening to, rather, yeah, we will, we will uh, hear all presenters and then uh, all speakers and then uh, there will be a Q&A session. Allow me to therefore uh, call Mr. Georgios Kremlis to the floor. He will uh, tell us what benefits may be expected to the agri-food sector from a circular economy. Mr. Kremlis, the floor is yours. Allow me to thank the coordinator. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to first of all congratulate the organizers of this important forum touching upon a very topical subject for it is connected to the resilience of agriculture amidst the pandemic and the climate change which is constantly uh, intensifying and it also touches upon the relationship between the climate, the environment, the pandemic, uh, agriculture, tourism and uh, quality of life, uh, a whole chain of sectors and actions which are inextricably linked and interconnected and they uh, keep influencing each other. All, all the parts of uh, this chain need to be secure and safe. Uh, so the title is very important, uh, Sustainable Agriculture. I uh, have been operating in the field of uh, circular economy over the past years, which constitutes the new model of the European Union, together with uh, blue economy, green growth, and uh, circular economy would be a great part of it. And instead of agricul sustainable agriculture, I would uh, use the, the term, the title, circular agriculture, for circular economy uh, needs to be integrated, incorporated into all uh, the policies of the European Union f to render all such policies circular. So, this is a very important uh, thing to say. It is important to also say that in an era of climate change, and we all know that environment know, knows no borders, uh, so we are all, we are all responsible for uh, the quality of our environment and we are all responsible for the uh, bad quality of our environment. So we all need to reduce uh, the climate and uh, agricultural footprint of all agricultural activities in all the previous, in all the sectors of the chain we are 
currently talking about so that agriculture and the agri-food sector will bear, will have the a very low, the lowest possible uh, footprint, thus guaranteeing uh, products of high quality, of high standards, which will not only be biological, organic rather, organic products, but will also be produced with a very low footprint, given that uh, the new policy of the European Union on circular economy aims at producing products which are products produced within the framework of the sustainable production patterns. Uh, sustainable patterns of production and consumption which are indeed vital. Let me also say a few words about the benefits of circular economy in agriculture. I have already spoken about them actually but it is important to to, 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 to uh, deal with agriculture in, in all its different uh, stages in order to allow circular economy to be integrated in all such different stages from the beginning to the end. How to, for example, use instead of uh, conventional fertilizers, bio uh, phyto uh, fertilizers uh, which can be uh, actually produced through circular economy because the very notion of circular economy is that we do not produce waste, we manage waste as secondary products uh, which are transformed into different products or uh, to be used as secondary products. So, within this framework, it is important to try to understand how, through biofelt fertilizers, uh, how, through a rational use and utilization of conventional fertilizers, how to reduce their uh, environmental footprint and improve the final quality of the products. The aquifer and uh, nutrition, nutrients rather, uh, in the sea are often damaged by the exaggerated level of uh, fertilizers in them. Therefore, we need to reduce the footprint or uh, neutralize it, uh, render it neutral, bring it to a neutral level. Pesticides, pesticides damage the sea uh, and we need, we need uh, better pesticides, uh, not just fertilizers but also pesticides. So how can we manage uh, agricultural waste uh, as raw materials in order to avoid something uh, that is completely illegal, uh, that is uh, the incineration of or the burning of the residues of the residues of uh, such products. And this applies to uh, animal breeding, uh, livestock breeding uh, residues because we can produce uh, biofuels and therefore it is very very important to be able to fully utilize all such, uh, all such uh, products and there are very specific technologies for such utility. There are many different ways uh, to fund such activities through the Green Fund of the European Union and several other programs which can uh, subsidize and fund uh, uh, 
Tristis, the Tristis, for example, project, which can fund municipalities uh, in for, for such a way of management. And then when we move on to the standardization of products, well, there too, we need to have uh, circular economy standards. For example, when we standardize peaches or and when we take the peat out, well, we can uh, produce energy at the same time. And what is very, very important is to be able to manage the residues from the olive oil uh, production and stone, that is. There are very specific uh, technologies to achieve so uh, and to also produce polyphenols. Uh, we can neutralize their toxicity. There have been some life uh, projects of the European Union uh, teaching, uh, leading to many best practices. Uh, which are there available to all of us. And then another issue of paramount importance is packaging, packaging of pesticides. The packaging of pesticides which can become very uh, dangerous and hazardous waste. We can't just wash them uh, and let them be. We have to use them uh, in uh, the appropriate way or put them in the landfill, put them in the landfill uh, appropriately. Uh, so, circular economy needs to be incorporated in all, into all different stages of agricultural production and uh, standardization of products. A very important element for all of you to know is that we need awareness. We need to raise the awareness of the farmers and uh, help them learn about uh, environment-friendly farming policies. And uh, the Agribusiness Forum contributes to the achievement of such a name. And we also need to be aware of all the different ways of funding uh, to promote such policies, uh, both from the European Union and uh, from national resources. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, George Kremlis, for this presentation, which was uh, an opening presentation to these events uh, because he raised many issues which will be covered in the next three sessions. And we'll keep what we said last uh, on uh, plastic and on reducing uh, plastic. So we need to provide training to the people dealing with uh, agriculture and we need to focus uh, on the reduction and, and elimination of plastic. I think this is very important. So moving on to the next presentation, this will be made by uh, Dr. Genesia Agirinopoulou, who is an MP, who is the Chair of the Committee on Environmental Protection from the Hellenic Parliament, and she's here to provide a women's perspective. She comes from uh, a rural area here in Greece called Ilia, uh, which is a pioneer in a lot of sectors. So the floor is yours. You're going to speak about biodiversity protection in agriculture, uh, the EU policy, climate change, and anything related to the Environmental Committee. Thank you very much. It is a great honour for me to be here today. I would like to thank the organisers uh, for the fact that they integrated the environmental aspects within agricultural production. Of course, this is an imperative of our time, so it's part of the EU policy, uh, part of uh, the global uh, changes made which uh, speak for the natural capital and the need to focus on that. 
So this lays the foundations for our development, for the agriculture production, for the agri-food chain. It lays the foundations and it's one of the pillars for the financial recovery of the European Union following uh, the financial crisis uh, that we dealt with in the past and the new financial crisis coming up as a cause, as a consequence of uh, COVID-19. I would like to thank you for speaking about our prefecture, Ilia. It's a rural uh, prefecture. It's the second biggest area where we produce in Greece a lot of agricultural products. Many of them we uh, export, many of which we export. And uh, for the prefecture of Ilia, for Greece, we have a lot of uh, agriculture areas so that need to be sustainable. This is in line with the European Union because one quarter of the prefecture needs to have organic uh, Project. This is one of the targets, the goals of the European Union, and it will be announced by the European Commission on Biodiversity up to 2030. I have the document with me here. So on the basis of this document, we will be asked to see what will be the new objectives on biodiversity. This is a document that was adopted in May 2020. In the same month, Greece as well uh, passed a new law on biodiversity, which uh, actually inaugurated a new organization, OPECA, for the protection of nature and the environment. And the symbolism lying behind this is that Greece actually upgrades environmental protection and uh, the protection of biodiversity. Why am I saying that? Because both Greece and the European Union are areas uh, where we have a high diversity. Coming to our country, I'd say that the biodiversity is amongst the richest uh, all over the world. We need to protect that, so we need to be guardians of biodiversity. Greece, in fact, has uh, more or less the same biodiversity value as uh, the state of the Caribbean. So we uh, want to protect our biodiversity on an international scale. Greece, in this aspect, plays a crucial role but the last few years, not only here in Greece, but all over the European Union, what we see is that the protection of biodiversity was downgraded. So uh, in this announcement by the Commission, uh, we speak about uh, the lack of laws, uh, the lack of protection mechanism for biodiversity. So this announcement made by the Commission is here to rectify not only the framework of our targets, but also the governance and the legislation gaps or the deficits lying in this area. So it's very important to understand, to grasp, that biodiversity is the uh, nucleus of environmental protection. Because when we speak about environment, we might talk about the urban environment, uh, about uh, the uh, all these aspects, the city planning and all that. But what are we here to protect? We're here to protect the flora and the fauna. We're here to protect wildlife, uh, ecological balance. Uh, so protecting biodiversity Biodiversity is the primary goal of environmental protection. So this is the nucleus, as we said, and we need to do that for two or three primary reasons. Of course, as humans, we need to protect biodiversity because, as we said, this is our production basis. Ecological balance uh, uh, as a second factor is very important, very crucial to the productivity and the sustainability of the planet, on the planet health as well. This is a new term that we keep hearing now in the era of COVID-19. And it's also important for the innate importance uh, of biodiversity, protection of biodiversity per se, as we say, because this dimension of the biodiversity protection is, I would say, missing from, uh, or rather, rather missing, let's say, from the announcement by, made by the European Commission on Biodiversity. So not enough emphasis has been laid on this aspect, but the strategy as such is very ambitious and, of course, very substantial. So what it says, basically, is that nature is uh, at... Um, uh, crisis and crisis and this does not only refer to the climate change the climate crisis 
but also to the protection of biodiversity. So there's a crisis in relation to biodiversity. To cite just one example, it says that during the last four decades, the global populations over wildlife have been reduced by 60% due to human activity. So you do understand it's very important for us to change, to alter the way in which we live, our way of life, the way in which we utilize the environment, because we uh, have to uh, address a crisis and if we do not change uh, the manner in which we behave towards the environment in the next few decades there will be substantial reduction of biodiversity and as a result this will be very painful on human beings as well. So one day mention mentioned there has to do with the connection between the climate, climate change, which affects us directly on our everyday life, and biodiversity. Because as the European Commission says, climate change contributes to the elimination of biodiversity through the loss of uh, numerous um, uh, biotopes, uh, ecosystems, so through the distractions and the disasters of uh, climate change but biodiversity as a such can help us overcome parts of uh, the problems entailed uh, by climate change because if you have sustainable systems they can also resilient systems through the wisdom of nature they can improve the climate and bring it back restore the climate to a balanced state but of course this requires our assistance as well so because of that climate crisis and the crisis of biodiversity the importance of maintaining biodiversity among other things for uh, prolongation of uh, life of human beings this decade that we have ahead 2020 up to 2030 is um, dedicated to biodiversity all united nations actions will need to integrate incorporate biodiversity on a systematic basis no matter whether we're talking about actions so uh, in re in regards to what um, uh, the developing world uh, the sustainability and uh, support to vulnerable populations biodiversity should be part of that no matter what and this is why in front of us we do have a very big conference which will take place uh, in the United Nations, uh, COP15, so meeting of uh, the countries, the 15th meeting of these uh, states within the context of the year of the Global Convention on the Protection of Biodiversity, which has been characterized as very important. As important, actually, as uh, the Treaty of Rio, uh, the Rio Convention of 1992, and the conferences on climate change that we currently hold, which are known to a lot of people. If I'm not mistaken, I only have three minutes left. So very briefly, I would like to say the following. What is important for the protection of biodiversity is linked to three different units thematic units the first one in relation to the european union and greece of course has to do with uh, the maintenance the sustainability of biodiversity the conservation actually which is the correct term the conservation of biodiversity which uh, is important for maintaining the levels of biodiversity the way they are protecting by at least 30 percent the biodiversity areas in Europe through the Natura 2000 network. So up to 2030, the European Union needs to protect uh, its territories and the sea by at least 30%. Greece already protects 27% of the land area uh, and um, the sea area within the Natura 2000 framework. So our country needs to reach 30%. Greece is going to make it. We believe uh, this will apply to other countries as well. And from out of this percentage, one third needs to be uh, protected totally. This applies to forests, agricultural production, etc. So agricultural production in forest areas uh, needs to be protected as a priority. The second pillar, which is very important, has to do with uh, the restoration 
the rehabilitation of biodiversity, which does not happen actually at all. We have destroyed parts of uh, biodiversity, such as our forests, lakes and other ecosystems, and we have not uh, restored them. So this is very important and uh, agricultural production is going to play a major role in this area because agricultural production is in fact one of the main uh, human-based factors uh, contributing to the uh, degrading of the ecosystem, so respecting the income of producers and always taking into account our agri-food security, we need to keep producing the amount of food that we do need uh, to stay alive but we need to incorporate uh, restoration rehabilitation actions for the environmental balance and the protection of biodiversity. So apart from the protection of uh, biodiversity, this strategy along with uh, the new uh, cap from the European Union, the Common Agricultural Policy, and uh, from the farm to the fork, as we said, this strategy, all these I need to integrate and incorporate new measures on uh, the farmers so they can get more financing in order to be able to integrate uh, targets of biodiversity, to allow their land to rest for a while, uh, to have uh, varieties that can reduce or le lead to a reduction of uh, the carbon footprint, etc. So one of the main targets of the agricultural production for the next decade is related to the commitment of 25% uh, of the agricultural production, as we said, on biodiversity. Plus, uh, another target, and let me finish with that, of the European Union, and our country is going to support that, is that in the next few years, everyone, every single one of us needs to plant one trillion trees in the European Union. So we, hopefully, uh, we think that uh, through your contribution, we can make it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Mrs. Avierinopoulou. I'd like to recall a program in Korea. I visited the country in 2016 and they had launched a program about planting trees, which they managed to achieve. And anyway, uh, this has been a great program uh, of great success and it is of vital importance for our survival. Uh, so, Greece is an agro-tourism country with lots of raw materials uh, and organic products. So, Mr. Skarmutus, uh, we are we would like to hear from you uh, now. All to, we would like to hear all the interesting things that you have to tell us, and we would like you to also talk to us about organic products, uh, about health. Uh, we uh, f we tasted some uh, delicious dishes uh, uh, yesterday, and we thank you very much. And so we're here to listen to what you have to say. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in your conference. I think it is important for people who operate in my field to be given the floor to uh, express their opinion. I uh, carefully followed the first two um, presentations. Uh, and I would like to now take all of us a step backwards. We are talking about agricultural production, livestock breeding, we uh, talk about organic products, sustainability, biodiversity, but we keep forgetting one important thing. We keep forgetting that distraction and the uh, excessive consumption of food which is taking place over the past years in our families, uh, in uh, caterings, in uh, food businesses and I will give you I will give you some numbers, some figures for you to understand. We uh, have a globalized 
order system in uh, the field of food and this is good because we can flavor food from all over the world but this is also bad because uh, well-off countries determine the prices and what does this mean that people in our planet people who produce the the specific food can't savor it can't eat it because this food is uh, constantly being exported and we keep seeing that all, all over the prices of agricultural products are based on exports uh, on the one hand this is good because exports are good but on the other hand it is bad because we also import uh, uh, cheaper products from uh, abroad from other countries instead of consuming our own raw materials on the other hand we keep uh, uh, we keep waste I mean the, the, there is a lot of weight uh, waste up to 50 percent of the food produced Third, from 33 to 50 percent, 1.3 trillion uh, uh, dollars, US dollars, and this is a, a tragical number. And then we have millions of people in the world who uh, are hungry. Uh, with just one third of this waste, we, we could feed uh, all such people who are hungry on a daily basis and this would be a wonderful thing so to produce all such waste uh, we would need one more land as big as china so we have one land one country one land like china uh, without any trees uh, imagine to produce all such food we have uh, uh, send animals away and people away from their villages. We have uh, consumed 25% of the water that we consume per year. And what do we do? We take the, the food that we produce and we throw it away. And when we throw this food away, well, it can become compost because they can't access oxygen. They keep accumulating one above the other in landfills and this produces methane uh, which is 25 percent worse than carbon dioxide so we don't just throw away we don't just uh, deprive people who are hungry of their food we also harm the environment by producing methane so just try to realize the, 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 the harm that we are causing when we don't think about what we throw away. Some people say that this is not our problem. Uh, some, you know, just people uh, or companies. But on the contrary, it is our problem. And it is a huge problem. And it is linked to agricultural production. There have been studies uh, who sustain, who, who say that uh, the global population will increase by 50% by 2050, which means that also production needs to, to increase. So just imagine the consequences. My grandfather used to say that uh, uh, land needs, uh, fields need one to two years to rest in order to be able to produce again a specific amount of food, a specific amount of production. So we keep resorting to alternative uh, ways of farming, of cultivating our field, our land, either by using uh, hybrids or seeds that have been transformed uh, in order to give production, give products without, however, vitamins, unfortunately, in order for such seeds to feed the world without, however, uh, the necessary elements or trace elements of uh, food, of foodstuffs. 
Please don't forget that we've always been cultivating and farming uh, to be able to live, to survive, not just to, uh, I mean, we, 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 not just to fill our stomachs. Uh, this is not correct. I mean, we can have tons of uh, tomatoes to give people to give people to eat. However, when we, I mean, we we also need to think about the nutrients in the products that we produce, in the foodstuffs that we produce. It's not, it's not just about quantity. It is also about quality, and this is a a very important element for us to consider. So what could we do? Lots of different things as uh, individuals, as businesses. In Greece, unfortunately, we often wait the government, the state, to do things for us. But no, we have to act alone. We have to act starting at home by reducing the waste of food, food waste. We need to educate our children, tell them what eating in the right way properly means we have to teach them what uh, um, correct proper market means uh, correct pro proper uh, production means we have to teach our children and the state needs to facilitate to 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 help us needs to contribute to this education we are uh, an agricultural country, we've always been so, but we've lost our way uh, and we've embarked upon the way of uh, the path and the way of tourism, which is linked to agriculture, of course, and needs to be linked to agriculture. I think we need to uh, rethink things. We need to try to find the, ag the agricultural way once again. We need to educate our children and people uh, about proper uh, food production and consumption and we need to try to we need to start reducing food waste and try to uh, support people who die of hunger thank you very very much I know I haven't answer uh, I did not answer your questions uh, well this is a very good question actually there has been a lot of debate and talk about organic products uh, over the past years in, in, in Greece. Organic, biological, uh, bio, bio-organic, uh, they are synonymous. I keep noticing a trend from our clients, you know, a, a trend uh, in favor of bio-products. However, prices in Greece currently amount to 20 or 30 percent are higher by 20 or 30 percent in Greece and it is very very difficult for us as professionals to integrate bioproducts into our menus regardless of whether we like them or not because our consumers the majority of our consumers cannot pay for such products because one thing is to buy organic tomatoes and eat them at home and another thing to include them into the menu of uh, catering services. So indeed, bioproducts are on the increase uh, at home, but unfortunately not in catering services. We are still lagging behind uh, because uh, due to the prices we believe in bio-organic products, however uh, high prices make them uh, unfortunately uh, don't make them accessible to us. This is the reason, the cost. We thank Mr. Skarmutsas, who reminded me of, uh, of an experience of mine in the past. Anyway, uh, children, uh, I met children who, who knew nothing about certain plants, and uh, 
they didn't even know uh, uh, what eggplant was the plant and they didn't they didn't they couldn't recognize it so yeah this is indeed indeed very very serious thank you very much for all the things that you uh, illustrated that you that you told us and now we will give the floor to mr george uh, to mr kasimis haralambos kasimis professor at the agricultural university of athens Thank you very much. I would like to thank Mr. Balakakis for inviting me. And at the same time, I would like to congratulate Mr. Balakakis on daring to organize such a conference under the current circumstances. As, um, you know, a, a continuation of the initiatives taken in the past few years where we had numerous participants and uh, where the topic was uh, the agricultural sector. It was very interesting to hear all the things you said and there's a link uh, to what I have to say. One thing is we need to remember that the only common agriculture policy in the European Union, the onset, wanted to was trying to coordinate some needs of the European population. On the one hand, uh, that had to do with being self-sufficient. On the other hand, uh, we wanted to improve uh, the agricultural production. And then, of course, we wanted to enhance uh, the income of farmers and deal with poverty, combat poverty. So all this happened, but it was to the detriment of environment. Uh, to the detriment of nature and biosecurity, biosafety and biosecurity. I have a problem with the slides, uh, a technical issue. Can you help me, please? Can you help me out? Says the speaker. So, one would say that we owe a lot to the common agricultural policy, the fact that it's in place. Again, same problem. Ah, oh, there you are. So, as I was saying, this uh, historic event of the common agricultural policy solved numerous issues, but I think we've reached a point where we need to rethink and we need to revise our policies on the management of the environment, the climate, and of the agri-food sector as a whole. Let me add that during the pandemic, we realized even more that uh, the drafting of the common agricultural policy also led to the implementation of a new model of production, of uh, an intensive uh, model of production, which um, has a great impact on uh, the negative uh, environmental aspect afterwards and on uh, the impact on uh, social cohesion in uh, the sense of um, a reduction in uh, the income of farmers on society. So where do we stand today? I would say that um, there's a rapture currently a rupture between uh, ecology and economy. So what are we trying to do at this point? This is uh, the topic of my presentation. What we're trying through the policies, uh, through the common agricultural policy and through the new policies relating to the strategy from uh, the farm to the fork, we try to address these crucial issues mentioned earlier. I'm going to move uh, quite fast on uh, the new recommendations of the CAP 2021-2027. We keep two main things. This is a new policy which uh, lays uh, more accountability, uh, gives more accountability, more functionality to the member states and at the same time sets up a new model, a new architecture on uh, this cap, a new model uh, for 
this sector. Here, we need to have the predefined targets and link them to the impact of the results and the outcomes that will uh, allow us to uh, receive uh, uh, the, uh, the money from the European Union. This is very important and I see that uh, we're running out of time here for the presentation. So, What is important for the common agricultural policy is that it enhances, and this is very important to say, is it enhances uh, environment. It takes that into consideration. So that's what we say, Enha enhanced environmental conditionality is the exact term used. So through the new recommendations, we implement policies of the past, uh, green aspects, and we also add new policies which are fundamental and imperative um, to the farmers. Now we'll get into further detail. The second important thing it does, and this is a common demand, is that the common uh, indicators so, we need to evaluate and monitor the common agriculture policy based on the outcomes. On one hand, you have targets set by each member state, and then you need to monitor and evaluate the national strategic framework. Uh, and all these will unite uh, the various member states together. All this is related to the general targets that we have within the context of the CAP. I will focus uh, on the environmental targets at this point. And I will say that they specialize into the action on uh, climate change, environmental care, and on the landscapes and biodiversity. These are the more specific targets of the CAP. Moving on. There's also a horizontal target of modernization when we try to manage knowledge, innovation and digitization. It's very important to see what the impact will be of the environmental measures within the context of the CAP and how we can uh, reduce this impact. This is why we need to have the horizontal targets uh, associated with knowledge, innovation and digitization. This is crucial, as we said, said uh, for the implementation of the new common agricultural policy. Now it's gone. Can we go back? Again, a technical issue, but this is fine. I can move on to the next few issues that are out of concern. So all these aspects uh, present us with a new architecture for the CAP and I would like to highlight that because this is a green architecture integrating one further, one additional element of innovation for environmental management. What is that? It's uh, the ECHO schemes. So here we add yet another necessary planning of the ecosystem. So by that we mean environmental protection measures uh, that will enhance one's income but will also protect the environment. At the same time these measures are part of the first pillar of the common agriculture policy and they enhance uh, this green architecture. So what it does is add through this recommendation, here we are, this is the green architecture of the new cap. You see the two pillars. Pillar one, we add the echo schemes, as I said, which is very important. And in the second pillar, we have uh, the well-known climate and environmental measures. So what is the new thing here? Echo schemes, I think, for our country, we need to utilize and make the most of um, the studies of the Greek environment in order to introduce appropriate measures for the eco schemes that will increase the income and protect the environment both at the same time. 40% of the resources of the new policy is related to the environment. And what's important here is that this implementation of the environmental measures is closely intertwined with the 
resources. This is a challenge for the Greek farmers. At the same time, it gives uh, them further ability to transfer resources, additional resources, from pillar one to pillar two, on condition that these resources will be uh, spent on further environmental measures. So what we have here is a new cap that uh, improves environmental protection measures and actions. So this is the new cap and what adds to that is the strategy from the farm to the fork, the strategy of biodiversity. Just a couple of words on that. Farm to fork. So this is related to the targets that we have from the Green Deal, the European Green Deal. The objectives here refer to the climate neutrality and to the reduction of um, greenhouse uh, gas uh, to 50-55% up to 2030 that was mentioned earlier on. These are interventions uh, that are necessary for the sustainability of the processing and of the distribution of the agricultural production that was set as well on the sustainability of the consumption of food and what is mentioned by Mr. Skarmotos, the reduction of food waste. So it's all the things you see here, sustainable food consumption, food processing distribution, food reduction, food uh, waste. All that is part of the common agriculture policy and these are very ambitious targets. Keep that in mind. These are targets linked with the reduction of the by 50% of the use of chemical pesticides by 2030, reduction of the use of fertilizers by at least 20% up to 2030, reduction by 50% of the sales of antimicrobial um, anti, uh, pesticides up to 2030, the increase of uh, bio uh, agriculture up to 25% uh, uh, of the land up to 2030. Fantastic, very ambitious, but how do we do that? What are our concerns? What is the European Union say? They say you need to do more by doing less. But could the farmers do that? Do they have the luxury to do more when they have fewer resources? Is that possible that the resources of the cap have been reduced in relation to the budget? And uh, then the expected resources from the recovery fund have uh, shrunk. Uh, actually after July, the summit meeting in July. And this is the confirmation actually of what I'm saying. The Green Deal, in fact, demanded resources for the adjustment to the strategies of the Green Deal. From 15 million in the Green Deal, uh, it's been reduced to seven and a half. The resources in research and agricultural seed research, again, there's been reduction there from 13.5 billion to 5 billion. And then for the just transition resources, our country was waiting for that as well. From 30 billion, it's been reduced to 10 billion. As you understand, we have uh, a problem of resources. Then, on top of that, the new policy has to deal with uh, international competition from countries that do produce without having these strict rules for environmental protection, uh, food safety and security. A third issue that arises has to do with uh, the labelling. And we've got uh, significant uh, problems there. Number four. Uh, this model, this policy also requires uh, measures for sustainable consumption, otherwise this model will, is bound to fail. And there are always uh, fears, this last point, that there will be a reduction of uh, productivity if we apply these measures. Because as you know, in organic agriculture, production is approximately 40% lower than in the cases of conventional farming. So. Can Europe, do you think that Europe will be able to face the great challenges of increased demand by 2050, by approximately uh, 70 to 100 percent on an international basis? Do you think we can do that? If you allow me one more minute, please. So I do believe that all this discussion is um, very important for the Greek uh, farming sector and for the 
system, agri-food system. This is a strategic direction, let's say, I would like to share with you for the drawing up of the national plan. What is uh, the opinion I'm here to testify and share with you? I believe that with the new cap, on the one hand, we need to improve uh, the production model of mass production, which is linked with uh, the funding that we get. But at the same time, we need to build, and what we said earlier on, a new model of uh, differentiated, diversified production based on the quality and the identity, on the geographic labeling, and on organic farming. So this will be safe and secure. Uh, and it will be certified. So at this point, the policies of the environment are very important and they distinguish between the two models. What I'm trying to say is that uh, the second model protects the environment a lot better. It's more environmental friendly, as we say, uh, as opposed to the intensive model. The recent publication of the Food Security Index, The Economist, confirms the comparative advantage of our country. What does it in fact say? What does it say that Greece uh, is doing good uh, this, uh, at the ranking in this index? But when we think about the quality and the food security, it's uh, very high. So we do have a comparative advantage. For necessary strategic priorities that can support and sustain such a model. One has to do with the, the demographic, demographic sorry, uh, renewal of the rural population. You cannot move on to this model unless you have younger people that have the knowledge, that are more extroverts and that have a more uh, comprehensive idea on the agricultural model. Number two, we do need a national plan for the restoration of the local production. So we do need a relocalization of our agricultural production that has uh, a low environmental footprint and short value chains. Then, next point, we need to have um, the implementation of national, European and international quality systems uh, to promote the quality and security of agri-food. And the last point is that we need a national functional system for the management of knowledge and research. Thank you for bearing with me. One last thing before I finish. <laughs> So through this transition, shift to this model, we can make sure that we get two things. One of them is the environmental policy uh, that has quality and at the same time the competitiveness of uh, the Greek agriculture to a further level, that of the quality of, and better prices. This is where the comparative advantage lies for modern farming method that will be a way out for our country. Thank you again for your understanding and for giving me the time to speak. Dear Professor, thank you very much for making us all uh, wiser and uh, yeah, we keep saying uh, young people to go back to their villages for well, that would be of help. They need to go back and become real farmers, though it may sound difficult. Anyway, welcome, Mr. Zalidis. Please tell us how to uh, further reduce uh, the carbon footprint in agriculture. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I wish to thank the organizers on the organization of uh, the conference. I am the last to take the floor. 
in this session, this is both an advantage and a disadvantage, Mr. Cassimis, with uh, the two last bullets he mentioned, well, he touched upon my theme as well, how to trace and standardize uh, certain elements uh, in the Greek products, and how to further reduce carbon footprint in agriculture. He spoke about the Green Deal, and the previous speakers also touched upon the Green Deal, together with uh, the circular economy. Well, they can help. And precision agriculture will also play a role. Uh, with reference both to production and to the, the nomination of the products, uh, the names of the products, and so on and so forth. In the health observation community where I belong, and I am the director of the Laboratory of Remote Sensing and Spectroscopy, NGIS, of the Interbalkanic Center of the Environment. We keep talking about the so-called Nexus approach, bringing together the resources for agricultural production, uh, food, water, and soil, the food security issue and the energy used as the three characteristics of the pillars upon which the Nexus approach is based. And uh, of course, soil quality and water quality are of paramount importance and um, all the elements that are transferred into our foodstuffs and so on and so forth, and therefore health and so on and so forth. So, the Nexus approach uh, states that sustainability nowadays has a name and a surname, and all elements are quantified through specific indicators, the SDGs, uh, the indices of sustainable development, so, the dilemma is that uh, whereas precision agriculture uh, talks about uh, different approaches to production and certifications for production, well, then we go to the product itself through the process of a reduced carbon footprint in agriculture, but because if we use reduced uh, fertilizers, reduced pesticides, reduced quantities of water, and so on and so forth, then through traceability we will reach the standardization of the product. And this is what happens in the first cluster we organized in, uh, uh, in the north of Greece uh, uh, for peach, and this is the very first cluster to ever be created in Greece, of the kind that is. Then, I'm not going to talk about soil, organic, uh, carbon, and so on and so forth. I'm going to now talk about uh, the fact that land degradation and land neutrality which is the succession, rather, which comes I mean, we're trying to protect our land together with its biodiversity, together uh, with the carbon uh, that is stored in it. How, how are we to achieve uh, such objectives? Well, we need digital monitoring, because the data produced in the space and on the Earth, uh, 
through telemetry, either mobile or fixed, or uh, through our planes and sensors. We have lots of sensors today. We are currently we currently live in the era of uh, mega big data, and all such data are important. And we also need services to support uh, the uh, uh, reduced carbon footprint uh, uh, society. And uh, GeoGlam is such an initiative uh, of the United Nations and the G20, uh, uh, focusing in the issue of food safety worldwide. Now, uh, clever or intelligent irrigation systems. Isonopisi. Prepi lipona peras. Zoning. Zoning is another uh, aspect of what I am talking about. In order to be able to deal with uh, climatic change, we need to divide uh, our 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 the earth into zone, into areas, in order to know where to uh, plant, what to plant, where to, you know, uh, in order to, to create the necessary national infrastructure for such an approach. And we are currently walking, working in the field uh, up in the north of Greece. Uh, we are currently proceeding to this 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 approach of zoning of dividing into areas uh, now earth observation uh, the earth observation committee has created all necessary tools for us to process uh, satellite data and and there are corporations worldwide uh, and ESA, ESA, Copernicus, and all such uh, uh, organizations. Uh, tele uh, consultants, telecounseling, rather, is an issue of paramount importance. Uh, and such an approach will help uh, farmers. Uh, and will also have the scientists uh, um, manage the data, uh, and then uh, the agronomists will will have the necessary information to then pass to uh, the farmers. Uh, the benefits would be plenty, and uh, new systems of intelligent agriculture. And need to be used. We uh, have such a system of intelligent agriculture already in Greece uh, because we need to reach the so called SAS, meaning uh, provide services to the farmers, help farmers achieve uh, the objective of reduced carbon footprint together with uh, traceability. Uh, for example, we can have uh, products of the Macedonian area, uh, zoned uh, products, uh, standardized uh, products. Uh, we are currently working in order to identify the terroir, the territory for olive oil uh, and so on and so forth. Here we see different types of data. Uh, big data, a bulk of big bulk of data uh, from everywhere. And uh, last evening we spoke about the gathering of uh, data from sensors to uh, act actuators. So from sensors to actuators, in order to have. Uh, uh, sufficient data in terms of water and other characteristics. This is a yet another process underway currently. Uh, and Mr. Kasimis uh, spoke about the very last axis of uh, the common agricultural policy, and he mentioned that indeed we need to be able to access uh, 
many different funds for funding and subsidies, uh, big scale data. We need to understand how to use certain tools in order to verify and confirm uh, satellite data. Data and knowledge, like in medicine, well, the same way in agriculture are, are necessary in order to achieve a reduced car carbon footprint. Uh, now, we spoke about policies, we spoke about techniques and processes. Uh, we need to uh, think globally and act locally. Uh, we need to focus on our soils, on our plants, on the different diseases. Well, we can have national open uh, data which will which will support farmers to become even more digital thus allowing them to have access to real time services in their farms so that their products will be products of reduced carbon footprint while of course uh, utilizing all available technologies which however require the creation of the appropriate ecosystem between scientists, universities, uh, the research sector and cooperatives. This clustering uh, which is the new way of uh, cooperating, uh, this is the new way to move forward in order to protect biodiversity, in order to protect production uh, with data of earth observation, with traceability and uh, uh, while utilizing the standardization processes of products I'm, I'm not just talking about uh, precision agriculture in general I'm talking about specific products of high added value with reduced carbon footprint and so on and so forth this is the way to achieve such products and we hope that we will be able to apply such processes in for peach uh, and uh, kiwi uh, we have already exported uh, kiwi and peach to China, uh, which were products with reduced carbon footprint. Uh, so we need uh, protocols in order to uh, transfer all such uh, processes to the farm and in order to actually measure the carbon footprint uh, uh, in the farms. We are going to, um, at a certain point, create a, a kind of carbon stockhouse uh, exchange, uh, stock exchange rather, uh, uh, in agriculture. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, so, given uh, the last uh, speech, well, let me also tell you that Mr. Mikhailidis will join us to coordinate the Q&A session. We spoke about many interesting things and the reduced ca carbon footprint. Uh, I uh, operate uh, in the field of uh, landscape architecture uh, and I would like to tell you that uh, all such things lead us to the protection of the ecology of our landscape and we have altered our landscape a lot and we need to pay attention to uh, avoid uh, altering it uh, further in the future. So. Dear friend uh, Dimitris Mikhailidis, what do you think about all the things that we've spoken about? Let us recap uh, before shifting to the Q&A session. I was told to press the button and I will do so. Well, 
uh, you put me right here at the very end of the panel because I'm a bit uh, fat, right? <laughs> just to counterbalance the weight of the panel. Just kidding. So is environment, uh, the whole earth, the whole pollen, is uh, the environment in the uh, Arctic uh, different from uh, Sahara? Uh, is it is it any different maybe uh, isn't it maybe that uh, the balance of all things you know uh, keeps moving from the individual to the whole planet to the whole planet uh, uh, meaning like uh, i mean like with uh, administration levels uh, from the municipality to the country and so on and so forth measurements are fine data are fine but certain monitoring processes and uh, assessment policies need to take place locally at a local level this is my point of view well yes i would like to ask uh, mrs avierinopoulou she's not right She's not here right now with us. Anyway, she will be back. Anyway, we spoke about traceability. Traceability is important and we need to talk about it. Let me talk about the volcanic uh, botanical garden of uh, Crucia. And the uh, seeds bank which aims at analyzing specific elements in order to provide data and uh, um, support local uh, plants and production and local biodiversity. Have you ever heard of such things? Well, Mr. Zalidis, talking about biodiversity, which is a notion that has on already been uh, I mean, map, there has been a specific mapping of uh, ecosystems and ecotypes. Low ground biodiversity below or low ground below ground biodiversity is a very important issue, however, and we keep forgetting about it. Uh, uh, beneficial microorganisms in food is an issue of uh, paramount importance as well. And it is linked uh, to biodiversity. Biodiversity in the field, rather, uh, rather uh, in terms of space or locality, is, is important for the very history of agriculture. For example, insects and multipliers, they depend on biodiversity. Therefore, therefore, we are obliged to maintain, we are obliged to see whether biodiversity is included in all the processes that we apply uh, in order to fully utilize our huge capital and I'm talking about our heritage ecosystems, ecotypes, ecosystems Indeed, these are all things that we need to apply to the landscape and to uh, fully utilize them in the best uh, possible way. Mr. Kasimis, there, has been, uh, there have been a lot of efforts underway over the past years in order to protect uh, biodiversity and local varieties in our country. However, we need to keep trying, for there are still several problems that we need to overcome, Prob problems having to do with uh, productivity. So we need a national strategic planning that will, uh, that will um, uh, follow the standards of the European Union 
and that will lay emphasis on a series of products uh, that have been central and important in Greece uh, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, a modern approach uh, to things right now would be a policy, uh, a, gl a global policy, a global approach rather to the policies applied, meaning to say a policy that will take into consideration the uh, global dimension but will be expressed and implemented at a local dimension, at a local level. Uh, I believe that this uh, to think globally and act locally, this, this approach needs to be translated into real policies. Uh, we uh, also spoke about um, incentives to uh, the younger uh, generations to go back to their villages and cultivate. Are there any tools for startups, for people who would like to go back to the countryside? Are there tools? Are there incentives? Have you heard anything about all such things, uh, uh, Mr. Mikhailidis? You, you, you know, I'm sure you know more uh, about such things. Are there any, is there any funding available? Uh, how can a person uh, make create a startup. Uh, I mean, if you feel itchy, you have to scratch yourself. If you ask other people to do it, they may harm you, you know. Meaning to say once again that we need local tools. Local tools should be applied. There are many different types of, of, uh, um, Competitions and um, where are the where are the tenders and tenders many different types of tenders and uh, uh, consultants all the consultants where are they what are they talking about what do they do I mean farmers they need support they need support. Farmers at the beginning, at the in the morning, they, I mean, they do do not have the time to educate themselves because they need to do thousands of things uh, on a daily basis. I mean, theory may be nice, but but practice is a completely different thing. So. Mr. Kasimis, what do you think? I believe that we need a demographic uh, renovation or renewal, and this is not pure rhetoric. I mean, we need policies, policies of land, land succession, education, training, and we need policies uh, for investments and uh, tools, uh, funding tools. We need a legislative framework to support succession in Greece. And then, of course, there is the issue of uh, funding. And uh, funding keeps increasing within the framework of the European policies. I'm talking about young farmers. Let me talk about the new environmental bill about the Natura zones and uh, other similar issues. Allow me to say that every bill, uh, whether be it rather whether voted or not, has a lot of safety uh, valves uh, when it comes to application. Uh, there have always been safety valves, uh, anyway. Uh, the, the, the point is, do we implement things properly? Do we um, make uh, the right uh, studies? Do we implement the policies properly? I think it all depends on us, uh, on the way we do things. Well, 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your presence in this first session of our conference. Uh, there may be many other questions to be answered. We will have time to do so later. We thank the organizers, uh, we thank uh, the speakers, and we thank our friends uh, online who have also participated in their way. And the Agribusiness Forum is here and will be here to allow the Greek agriculture to move forward. Η Αθηναϊκή Ζηθοποιία ιδρύθηκε το 1963 από μια ομάδα Ελλήνων επιχειρηματιών και σήμερα αποτελεί μέλο του ομίλου Heineken NV. Πολύ εμπορικό και βιομηχανικό κόσμο παρευρίσκεται στη θεμελίωση των νέων εργοστασίων τη Αθηναϊκή Ζηθοποιία που θα αρχίσει τη λειτουργία του τον Ιούνιο του 1964. Με την ίδρυσή τη, λοιπόν, και εφόσον υπήρχε και έτοιμο το οικόπεδο, εκδόθηκαν οι οικονομικέ άδειε. Άρχισαν να παραγγέλνονται τα μηχανήματα, άρχισε να προσλαμβάνεται προσωπικό. Η μπύρα Άμστελ κυκλοφορεί την Άνοιξη του 1965 και συγκεκριμένα την Μεγάλη Παρασκευή. Την Παρασκευή το απόγευμα φόρτωσαν τα τέσσερα αυτοκίνητα στο ξαφνικό και γύρισαν τις μία η ώρα με μια μισή τη νύχτα. Τα αυτοκίνητα διανά. Η Αθηνακής το οποίο για μένα είναι η ζωή μου. Θα έλεγα ας πούμε έτσι λίγο... Να το παραφράσω ότι αν ξαναρχόμουν ποτέ σε αυτόν τον κόσμο, θα ήθελα να ξανακάνω αυτή την πορεία. 